Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, this is our Thursday night um, Sunday school. And so um, we're going to get right into it. Um, I'm going to ask um, Evangelist Vanessa, would you open us up in prayer, please? Yeah, sure. Gracious Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, on this evening, Lord. Lord God, just give you the glory and honor, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for what you've done, Lord God, all day long, Lord God, all week long, all month long, all year long, Lord God. We give you the glory, Lord. Lord, and we thank you, Lord God, for this class on tonight, Lord God. We ask that you be with the speaker, Lord God. Lord God, may you prick hearts, Lord God. Lord God, and we just want to give you the glory on tonight, Lord God. Lord God, just rightly dividing the word. Lord God, Lord God, and we give you praise, Lord God, thanking you for all things in your name, Lord God, taking nothing for granted, Lord God, and we thank you for your goodness, your love, and your tender mercies. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, praise the, Lord, the Lord. Lord. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so tonight um, our lesson is talking about the life God blesses. And I'll tell you, um, this has been a really, really good lesson uh, for me reading it and just going over it. I'll tell you, um, my heart has been pricked and uh, it's just, you know, it's hit home in a lot of ways. And so uh, when we talk about the life God blesses, you know, I want to ask you guys, so like, um, you know, when, when I think about uh, the life God blesses, uh, you know, we think about the good life, you know, what's a good life. And um, so what I wanted to ask you guys tonight is, um, you know, what would it take, you know, for you to feel like you have a good life that God blesses? What would it take? Would it take a bigger house, a fancy car? Uh, would it take you to have him? Or would it take you to have her? I mean, what would it take for you to feel like you're just really have a good life? You live in a good life, a blessed life. You know, I know for me, you know, I felt like I said, man, when my kids get grown, I'm going to have a good life. When they get out of my house or, you know, it's things that I thought that was just going to really make me whole. You know, when I get my real estate license or lose 40 pounds. And, you know, everything that we think about that we, we may need or want or think it's going to make life better, it never really fills the void. It never really makes you feel like you have the good life. You wonder when you see um, people that are millionaires and stars and stuff, and they commit suicide. And you wonder, like, why would they do that? They got it all. They got everything. And it's because you know, they still don't feel that. It's still, none of that fills the void, you know, as far as when you think about um, the life God blesses. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. Um, my Bible uh, is the NIV. I hope um, I hope it's not offensive uh, for anybody. Um, so we start out uh, Matthew 5, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. And I'm going to just go ahead and read... Uh, verses 1 through 12, and then go back through it. Um, so it says, now when he saw the crowd, he went up He went up on a mountainside, and he sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will be so they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then it kind of says it again, blessed are you, makes it more personal. When, when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, 
they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So um, that's one through um, 12 in chapter five of Matthew. And, you know, we know that as um, the Beatitudes. And uh, so we're going to uh, go on to um, the first the first verse. Blessed are the poor in spirit, um, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, uh, and, and I want you guys to feel free to chime in with me tonight and we can just we can just talk about it, you know. And um, so blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Um, this doesn't mean poor like money, you know. The Bible is talking about spirit, your spiritual condition. Like um, it's talking about like, you know, like you can't, uh, like we need God, you know. And poor in spirit means like, I can't do it on my own. And, and y'all have notes, I do better when I don't read them out to you. But anyway, so poor in spirit is acknowledging, you know, I can't do this without you, Lord. You know, and a lot of times uh, we may not even realize it. I know for years, I didn't even realize that I was trying to do a lot of things without asking God to help me. Oh yeah, I would ask him, but I really didn't mean it like for God to get involved I really kind of just you know wanted to do it on my own and feel like you know pride you know and so um you know poor in spirit is knowing that you need God you know that you can't do it on your own and that um we're just you know calling on him you know to help us and knowing you know that we can't do it on our own any comments all right, so we'll go on to uh, the second one. Um, blessed are those who mourn, who mourn, for for they will be comforted. Um, so in this, um, as I was reading, um, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's not just talking about like mourning uh, the dead, the loss of something, but it's it's the sin, you know, the sin in your life, you know, and knowing that you've heard God, you've heard your own self, you know, it's, you know, it's really dealing about the sin and, you know, not going and hiding your sin and covering your sin. And a lot of times, you know, we look good, you know, we look good. We come to church. We know how to, um, keep ourselves in a position to look like everything is okay, you know, and covering up our sin and knowing that this is something that needs to be dealt with, but we may or may not deal with it in a way that, you know, is crying out to God, you know, that, um, you know, that Lord, we need, we need your help, you know, um, you need God to draw near to us and comfort us and, you know, I, we know that he forgives our sins, but we got to acknowledge, you know, that we've sinned, you know, and, 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 and be sad about it, you know, sad that you hurt God, sad that you could have possibly hurt someone else, you know, and, um, yeah, so that's, um, blessed are those who mourn, you know, for they shall be comforted, and then when we go to the Lord, and, more in our sins and sad and sorrowful about it. He said we would be comforted, you know, that he will forgive us, you know, and comfort us, you know, but when you cover it and you try to move on without the help of the Lord, then he doesn't, you know, he doesn't come, you know, and, um, and comfort us, you know, I'm really intrigued, you know, by, um, going through this and reading it, you know, talking about the blessings of God, you know, I know um, when, you know, the first set of laws and stuff that God gave us, it was on a mountain, you know, and now even this, you know, uh, when he gave the Beatitudes, you know, it said he went up into a mountain, you know, to talk to his disciples. I don't know what it was about the mountain, but uh, anyway, um, that's what the Bible says. So then uh, any comments, questions, concerns?
So we'll go on uh, to the third one. Uh, Blessed are the meek, for they will for they will inherit the earth. And so uh, when it's talking about blessed is the meek, you know, um, God is talking about, you know, our heart posture, you know, and, um, you know, the best way to describe meek is power under control. You know, uh, it's how we interact with others and show meekness even when others don't, you know, like, you know, to be meek, like on your job or you know, I like to always, you know, make it more personal because, you know, we go to our jobs from day to day. We go to the grocery store. We, you know, interact with people. And, you know, I like to think that when we interact with people, they'll say, you know, well, she's a meek and humble person, you know, not a rowdy, loud and disrespectful, rude person, you know. And so, you know, meek is like power under control. So like you might be at work. And you know the answer and you know what the job description is, you know, and someone else is mouthing off and, you know, they don't know. And but being meek and humble is to even keep quiet when you know that you could outwit the person, you know, that you could um, make the person, you know, feel embarrassed. You know, meekness is you know, you got the power, you know that you, you know, are maybe more intelligent in that situation, but you, you know, allow God to restrain you and to uh, show humility that people, when they know you and they see you, you look like God, you know, you look like Christ. You're not just out there uh, just talking too much, being too loud and you know, not being, you know, the opposite, you know, is being, you know, arrogant and, um, you know, not exhibiting Christ. Any comments? So again, you know, it's your, it's your outward posture, you know, and, and all of this, you know, all of this, every last one of these, you know, it's a matter of the heart. You know, you want to know what's in somebody's heart. You know, you get them all fired up. You know, it's come, it's going to come out, you know, what's in the heart. And all of this is, you know, just saying, you know, how much do I love the Lord? You know, do I love him enough to, you know, be quiet when I can keep talking, you know? And so, uh, you know, the meek will inherit the earth. So um, the next one is talking about um, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So I just want to, I want to stop right here. And I want to ask someone uh, if they'll make a comment on what does that mean to you about blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Brother Strong, you want to make a comment on what that means to you? Well, you know, I can't help myself. I know it. I know you had that button just I waiting to push it. You know, I, I think about I think about that when when um when you look at the needs of people, when you look at um, where you're coming from. And we hustle about trying to satisfy ourselves and we, and we look to satisfy those things that we think we want. But I have found in my life that those things that I don't look for, I, I end up getting because I'm looking to try to satisfy the needs of others around me. And I, I don't worry about the things that, that I would do for myself, but when I see other people, see, see their needs, and I work to try to help them, then I'm blessed. And I don't always start off that way, but I have found over time that when you seek to do a service to others, that you end up being blessed yourself. And it's it's a principle that it kind of make it makes sense because that's just how God is. He wants us to serve others and do 
uh, to help those who cannot help themselves. And, and many times we, are, we have things that we are able to do and we don't realize just how good we have it. Uh, I'll stop right there. <laughs> no, it's fine. Anyone else have a comment? About blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness so they shall be filled. What comes to my mind is I think about the woman uh, at the well, you know, and, you know, she was looking for love in all the wrong places. You know, she had uh, many husbands and all of that, you know, and, you know, the Lord had told her, you drink from this water, you'll never thirst again, you know, and that's what God wants us to do is drink from his, you know, from the living water, you know, and we seek after him and his righteousness, then we are full. But, you know, um, you're never going to be full, you know, uh, looking for things in the world. You're never going to have a big enough house, never going to have a big enough car. You're never going to have enough food to eat or enough clothes in the closet and enough um, shoes and purses. And, and, you know, y'all, I'll tell you, uh, reading this, uh, it, it really stepped on my toes, you know, I was sitting up this morning uh, before I had my prayer and I was just looking around my room and I'm like, man, I have so much stuff. I'm talking about purses and shoes and just junk, you know, and just stuff that I don't need, you know, and probably could ship that stuff to Africa and somebody would be so blessed to have it, you know. And uh, I said, Lord, I'm going to get on Poshmark or somewhere and just start selling this stuff, start giving it away. You know, it's just too much, you know, and I don't want to be found hungering and thirsting for the wrong thing, you know, and um, um, so, yeah, so, you know, that's what comes to my mind when I think about uh, hunger and thirsting, you know, just being intentional about seeking God and his righteousness, you know, and um, he said, if we do that, we will be filled, you know, and uh, I know that even, you know, even the smallest of things, and I'm a person that, that I'm very transparent about what God does for me, and, and the things he shows me, I figure, you know, maybe it'll help somebody else, and so the one thing like that for me, you know, that I'm like, Lord, this is an addiction. This is wrong. And, you know, some things we look over, you know, like if I was having an affair, y'all wouldn't overlook that, right? But we can overlook sometimes if a person is. So like, I don't overeat like with food, but with drinks, you know? So like, I love tea and coffee and soda. And I'm talking about in excess to a point where, is made me unhealthy, you know, um, pre-diabetes and high blood pressure. And my doctor told me if I just cut back on that sugar, you know, it would be better. And, and I'm like, Lord, you know, for me, and the doctors already told me, you know, whatever, that's, that's those little iniquities, that's sin. For me, it's sin because I'm destroying my body for, and, you know, hungering and thirsting after the wrong thing, you know, and, and it might sound really out there, but, you know, it's important, you know, it was important enough that God got my attention to speak to me about it. And so, um, so that's what I am uh, giving up, you know, the, the sugar. And so, um, you know, and, you know, in moderation, but mine wasn't moderation, you know, Anyway, so any other comments or anybody want to share? <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, five, uh, I mean, the fifth one, um, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Now, we like to be shown mercy, but are we merciful? If we are honest, are we merciful and uh, forgiving, 
you know, when it comes down to it, you know, are we merciful and do we show mercy? We think about, uh, we think about uh, mercy, you know, mercy is, um, is one thing and then forgiveness is another, you know, um, you think about uh, the Good Samaritan, you know, uh, he showed mercy, um, but it was nothing for him to forgive, but he showed mercy on a stranger that had been beat up and left on the side of the road where the Pharisees and the Christian people went all the way around on the other side, you know, and mercy sometimes is just us looking at our brother, our sister, you know they need help. You know it's something in your power that you can do. It's not necessarily that they did something to you you need to forgive. No, mercy is showing love and compassion, you know, for your brother, for your neighbor. You know they need it. And mercy is showing that the same thing that you want. You know, we want mercy when it's time for us to have mercy. I know if I were to go, have to go to court or something like that, I want mercy, right? But then if somebody do something to my child or something like that, and I have to go to court, I'm not going to want to show mercy. You know, it's different when the shoe is on your foot to show mercy. And, and that, you know, that's a big deal. And again, you know, it's a matter of the heart. You know, what is your heart? You know, where is your heart when it comes to the mercy and the compassion for others, you know, for your brother, your sister, or somebody even that you don't know, and they're hungry and they're needing something, you know, where's your mercy? So I wanted, you know, to ask, um, is there anybody on here that want to share a story of anything where God had you to show mercy when maybe the person didn't deserve mercy in terms of, you know, how you may feel? No, everybody speak up at the same time. You're going to make me do this again, aren't you? Yes. You know I will. Well, because when whenever mercy is involved, something has occurred that was out of order, and so therefore somebody somebody did something wrong. If I if I if I understand what mercy the need for mercy comes from, because uh, if you're wrong there is a consequence for being wrong. And so if somebody does wrong, you say, okay, now you got to pay. And, and of course, we go kind of easy on ourselves, but when others have offended us or stepped out of line or done something that was not according to protocol, you name it, they were just wrong. And for us to look on them like, okay, I'll forgive you because uh, you're my friend, I can have mercy. Or you're my relative, I can have mercy. But someone that you don't know, uh, you throw the book at them. But someone you, can't, you have nothing in common with, mercy don't come easy because we cannot relate to them. There's no relationship. There's something that is that does not tie us together. But here, we, there's a principle here that God is showing us because we are wrong in the sight of God because we are sinners. And we need his mercy because we are out of line. And if we can show mercy to someone that is out of line with us, don't we want a God that will show us mercy because we are out of line with God? Yeah. It's, a, it's a powerful principle if we can ever grasp what that concept is because if we if we show mercy we can get mercy something like that yeah yeah amen um sister I have, bush i have a comment um that takes me back to the lesson that we just recently covered 
of the two um, debtors of how God showed mercy for the one that owed him. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, then when it was his turn, he went and he didn't show any mercy. Right. He wanted the book thrown at the mm -hmm. other debtor. Mm -hmm. So I, um, that, that story just kind of popped in my head about when you was talking about mercy. Yes, yeah. it's something that, as Brother Strong has said, we have done something that we know we deserve punishment yeah. for, but God yeah. has mercy. We ask God for the mercy and we should be that humble enough to show mercy to others also. Yeah. Um, my husband and I, we, we have this saying and um, we say that, um, you know, as far as like salvation and uh, mercy. And so we have this particular family member and he will remain nameless. And we say, man, we know he going to come with that big hammer. We we say, I always say, he going to come with that big hammer. If you do something wrong, he going to preach to you. And I'm talking about no mercy and all law and no grace. And I mean, he come with that hammer, you know, and we say it all the time. And we say, you know, I want to be like that. But guess what? I find myself being like that sometimes, you know, uh, with the big hammer when it comes to my children and they know they're wrong and they, and I taught them better. And when it comes to, you know, mom, I just need some mercy, just you to listen and not condemn me and, you know, whatever. And, and, you know, this, it, this hit home for me, you know, and I, I was reminded of a time that something had happened and I, I was so broken and crushed by it, you know, and I, I thought I had forgiven the person, you know, and then when the person, something crazy happened with them, you know, nothing bad, just like a slap on the wrist they got, you know, and I found myself like, yeah, that's what they get. They shouldn't have did that to me, you know, but that was a mercy, you know, and I should not have uh, felt that way. But again, I'm, I'm being transparent, you know, um, the heart is deceitful above all things desperately wicked. Who can know it? You don't always even know those things are in your heart. And that's why we have to constantly go before the Lord and pray and read and learn of him. So we know when it comes time, I know I need mercy. I want mercy. I got to have mercy. And when it comes time, I've got to show mercy too. And so again, um, this lesson, you know, it, it stepped on my toes. It really did. So um, unless anyone else has a comment, I'll go on to the next one. Any other comments? Um, so the next one is this one that we all have. Bless out a pure in heart, for they will see God. So again, you know, I feel like the lesson is uh, the whole thing is about a matter of the heart. The whole thing, you know, is a matter of the heart. Uh, again, you know, we often try to look the part like we're doing well and, you know, everything. And, you know, and I'm always reminded, you know, of the scripture that say um, that, you know, many will come in that last day and they'll say, Lord, you know, did not prophesy, did not, you know, cast out devils. I did this and that for you. And he said, apart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. And I'm like, Lord, never ever knew me. You know, and, um, and, you know, it's because of the iniquities, you know, in your heart, you know, um, this is blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Um, you know, you know, I wrote in my notes, you know, you can pray like Peter, fast like Paul, you know, all of that. But uh, when it comes down to it, you know, your heart has to be right. You know, we've got to deal with what's on the inside. We can cover it up all we want to, you know, but you got to, you only the pure in heart shall see the Lord. And I want to see him. I want to see him. I got questions. I got something. I want to see the Lord. I don't want to let 
some malice or something in my heart that's not right separate me, you know, from uh, from seeing God. I want I want to be able to see Him, and I want to be able to see Him in peace. Does anyone have any comments about uh, blessed are the pure in heart, so they shall see God? And can I ask the question, you know, what does that mean to you to have a pure heart? And I want to ask you, Evangelist Vanessa, since you're the only one on my screen that got your face up, what does that mean, you know, to you all? You're, you're on mute. You're on mute. Okay. I said, well, let me take it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, what was your question again? What does it mean to you uh, to have a pure heart? You know, it's... Well, you know, if we... Okay, the Bible, uh, you know, tell us those things that you had just explained about... Um, not having any malices in your heart, you know, and uh, not having any all against your brother and all this, these things. But um, we also, you also mentioned about, you also mentioned the word where it says, um, the heart is deceitful and wicked, who can know it? So when I look at what is pure in heart, <laughs> It's kind of hard because uh, being that we are in this human flesh, it's kind of hard not to have something in your heart, even if you're not aware of it being anything that uh, is pleasing or not to God, you know, because when that scripture to me says that, you know, when he said um, the heart is uh, uh, um, deceitful and desperately wicked, who, who can know it, you know? So that says to me that nobody knows the heart but God, because like you said, we ourselves don't even know what's in the heart. So a lot of times, if you don't know yourself what's actually in the heart, now we talk, now I'm not talking about the things that we know about, but if there are things in the heart that we don't know about, then, you know, how can we, you know, how, how can it be pure? if it's not pleasing in God's sight. So that's what I would have to say about it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> did you take, uh, I thought you took, oh, uh, no, somebody with uh, Galaxy S21.5. That's, I'm Sister Muirhead, praise Lord. I praise was Lord. like, when Sister Vanessa was talking, you have to pray, uh, like David did when he asked the Lord, creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. You have to pray that and ask the Lord to help to have a clean spirit, a clean heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, Tara. And yes, it's me. Hey, this is Tara. Um, I was reading on Google and he said a pure heart. Uh, let's see, hold on. A pure heart that desires nothing more than to be with God because that truly is our life should be about. And then I was thinking about when a lot of people pass, you know, uh, they always have on, some of them have on their obituary well done, thy good and faithful servant. So I think that's what we're trying to strive to hear the Lord say is well done. And um, I try to have a pure heart it, every time I step out of the door. A lot of times when I go to connect us, I have stuff that I'm not even using that's been sitting there for a long period of time. And I say, well, you know, this person could use this more than I could because, and I, I just collect a lot of stuff. And then, you know, when they get it, they're just so grateful to get it. So. I think that's what a pure heart is. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
you know, it talks about uh, the heart being clean and blameless and unstained, you know, and, you know, we go through, you know, the purifying process, you know, God cleanses our heart, you know, through the word of God, you know, and we have to constantly be purified and constantly be clean. And man, just when I think that I made it or I'm, you know, doing really good, you know, uh, then something else shows up. I'm like, man, Lord, you got to do a lot of work on me, you know? And um, so, yeah, um, you know, our heart has to be constantly, you know, the Bible talks about search me, you know, search my heart. You know, I don't want to be um, doing, you know, I don't want to be deceiving my own self, you know, thinking that I'm, you know, okay, and and I'm not. And, um, you know, my biggest thing that, that I struggled with, you know, I say ED struggled with, you know, was that was in my heart that would have separated me from God was, you know, the unforgiveness, you know, things where, you know, someone may have wronged me or hurt me or something. And I just held on to it. And I mean, refused to let it go. And so, you know, when I refused to let it go, I also was refusing to be forgiven of my stuff and to refusing to accept God's love and his forgiveness, you know, so, you know, when, when you're talking about your heart being pure, you know, that's the thing where, you know, um, I, I started this, uh, new thing of just, just, yes, telling God, yes. When you show me something big or small, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. My husband told me the other day and y'all, he had to go back to work. I hate it. Cause he was going to be here, uh, in the class with me, but um, he told me the other day that he came home and he was talking to me and I kept saying, yes, dear, yes, dear. He said he wanted to go outside and look on the mailbox and <laughs> make sure he was in the right house. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, very funny. But anyway, um, you know, that's a part of it. Continue to say yes to the Lord you know, allowing him to refine us and to cleanse us and creating us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. Any more um, comments, questions or concerns? So, uh-oh, here's a good one. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God the peacemakers. Now, are you a peacemaker or a fire starter? Are you spreading stuff, igniting? What do they call it, y'all? They call it gaslighting. You know, you might not have started the fire. You might not have started the trouble, but you're not being a peacemaker when you spread it. Girl, I wouldn't take that. Child, let me tell you, you know, all that, you know, you're not, um, you're not being a peacemaker. And it says they'll be called the sons of God. You know why they'll be called the sons of God? This according to me, because they'll look like him. They'll be acting like him. You know, when we are peacemakers, we look like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are exuding, you know, we are showing that characteristic of God, you know, when we are peacemaker. Being a peacemaker, you know, it ain't no easy job. I am one of three girls and my two sisters, they call me, the one to call me, Lonnie, guess what? Tansy did so-and-so, the other one called me. Uh, Lonnie, Wanda did so-and-so, blah, 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 back and forth. Guess what? I tell them, I don't have to choose because I am both of their sisters. You know, I don't have to choose and pick a side and tell this one what that one said and this one because I'm just igniting the fire and they don't see the Lord in me. So when I make peace with them, both of them, they say, Lonnie, they say, girl, you're going to heaven because I ain't never seen nobody just peaceful about stuff that other people would just be just outright, uh, you know, acting up. Now, I am not trying to brag and say I made it or anything like that but I know what it is to make peace, you know, and to be a peacemaker. I pray 
you know, that I get to be uh, called, you know, blessed are the uh, peacemakers for they will be called the sons of God. Um, and, and this is dealing with your character. It's still dealing with your heart too. You know, um, we're acting like, we're acting like our father, you know, uh, being peaceful. And, and that's what Jesus did. You know, when, when, when Jesus walked the earth, they thought, you know, he was getting ready to form an army and physically fight. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and rulers of darkness and bringing into captivity every evil imagination to the obedience of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So sometimes, you know, that means that, you know, we're peaceful. We do war, but we war in the spirit. We bring those high places down in prayer, in prayer, you know. We're peacemakers. We are not, you know, um, supposed to be, you know, the world calls it messy and, you know, uh, repeating stuff and keeping the fire started, keeping the fire go going. You're supposed to kindle that, you know, fire down. And, you know, the Bible talks about we're the salt of the earth. You know, I think about how salt, if you ever get a little fire on your stove, you sprinkle the salt on it you know, and that's what we're supposed to do when it's a fire going between two people, just sprinkle that salt on it, not, you know, not the oil on the fire and keep it going, you know, we're supposed to bring that down, and so I'm keeping up with my time here, so uh, does anyone have any uh, comments or uh, where they've had to be a peacemaker? None of y'all had to be peacemakers. I, I have a comment. Okay. I have um I have a tendency of when it comes to my children of really telling them, well, you were wrong and you need to do this or you need to go and ask this person to forgive you or you need to reflect on yourself to see what what is it that you're really upset about. And then all of a sudden they be telling me, mama, you're trying to fix things. You can't fix everything. I said, but some things is not that I'm trying to fix. It's some things I think I feel that I'm trying to get them to realize that they want to be treated a certain way. Why can't you treat your sisters and brothers the same way? Mm -hmm. If you want to be treated, this way, do unto them as you want them to do unto you. Yes. So um, then they go, well, that's why they call me the fixer. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, um, I, I, I think a lot on that term of being a peacemaker. Um, not so much of saying that you're right or trying to be a righteous who or try to show that you are. You just try to Want them to get along as 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 it has been said. Why why can't we show more love in the world? So I guess that's where I'm at with when it comes to being a peacemaker, what I think about. I just um, had to think that. <laughs> go ahead. Because I think that is really dear to me, being the peacemaker. If we just show a little love, I think we it could go a long way. You know, it's important because all of these things, you know, that are coming out with the uh, Beatitudes, all of these things show that Christ lives inside of us. You know, uh, we had a situation with uh, with one of our middle sons and um, he went a whole year without speaking to his daddy. And I'm talking about it crushed my husband's soul down to the core. My husband loved him so much. And so when during the time that he was not speaking to him, uh, he was talking to me, the son, um, Joshua. And so while I was getting more of my son's attention, at the same time, I could feel the pain of my husband and uh, wanting to reconcile. 
So when I would talk to my son, I said, Josh, you need to make that right. You need to talk to your dad. You need to make that right. I'm constantly telling him he need to make that right, you know, because I need to be that peacemaker for them. And my, if my husband was not wrong anyway, and Josh was just, he's just spoiled, but it crushed my husband's soul that he wouldn't talk to him. So this year for Father's Day, it's been a whole year. This boy was so honorary that he even had it in his phone the last time he talked to his dad. So I said, for Father's Day, would you please come and meet us at dinner and reconcile with your dad on Father's Day? And y'all, he came. My husband all but cried. I, I, I want to cry when I tell this story. I mean, because, you know, he, he, he loves his kids and he wanted to. He, Josh is the only one that just would not speak to him, you know, over something so small and minute. And um, anyway, you know, we are to be peacemakers, you know, um, and not to be, you know, gaslighting and, and keeping that thing going, you know, um, and we'll be called sons of God, you know? And um, so uh, the next one, um, actually, I'm going to get it here. Blessed are those who, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then the next one is in reiterating the same one. Blessed are you when you are in, when you are insult you, persecuted you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of because of me rejoice and be glad great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you now when it's saying blessed are you when people insult you and they persecute you persecute you falsely now it ain't talking about when people persecute you and you have said something nasty to them, you've been ugly to them on the job, you know you haven't done the right thing and you're being persecuted. We're talking about being persecuted for righteousness sake. A lot of times we um, may feel like we've been wronged, but if you, know, if you go back and really think about it and you, know, you go back, maybe it's something that you said or that you did that caused this person to be salty or, you know, ugly towards you. And um, it's, it says that rejoice um, and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Um, you know, and I want us to think about, and a lot of times I know sometimes it's hard to think about delayed gratification and things that are to come when we can't see it, you know, it says, you know, um, I'm going to be laying up treasures in heaven. Great is my reward in heaven. Well, I can't see that reward in heaven. I mean, you ever had a box under the Christmas tree or something and you just want to peep in there and see what it is because you just don't know, you know? And um, God says, you know, when we're persecuted for his name's sake, um, great will our reward be in heaven, you know, um, and, and that's good. You know, we have to think about that and not just um, be thinking about the here and now, you know, a lot of times, I mean, and, and you know, we got to have lights and water and gas and we got to have some things that we got to have, but, um, but, but we need to think about you know, storing up our treasures in heaven and, you know, not worried about being persecuted on this side, you know, because great is our reward in heaven. Any comments, uh, Brother Strong? You've been really quiet. <laughs> it's because you're doing a fine job. You're doing an excellent job, as a matter of fact. You know, I, I, I was listening to you about uh, being a peacemaker. I was, I was wondering, where do you, where do you fit between your, between your sibling? Are you in the middle? Are you the oldest? Are you the youngest? I'm the oldest girl. Oh my. 
Yes. I'm you're in old. church, right? Yes. But they do try to boss me around because they're not in church. So they use some ugly words and stuff. Not on me, but, you know, yeah. But yeah. I am, even with my parents, everything, I'm the one uh, that's the peacemaker in the family. And I look at that from a position standpoint within a family, um, the responsibility that falls upon the oldest and uh, their their place. Do they take it up and take the, the accountability for being in that position uh, to be a peacemaker? And and sometimes the um, the youngest will, will will tend to say, "Well, I'm the baby. I it's about me, me, me." And for myself, I, I find myself being somewhere in the middle, trying to make peace on both ends. Mm -hmm. So it, it is interesting, how do you get to that point? And the mm -hmm. only way that you can really get there is you got to have the love of God in you. That's right. You got to have his spirit working in you to, to understand the needs of those that are older, those, those that are younger, and to be able to resolve those things and put yourself out of the way so that you can uh, bring about peace. Because in this life, most things really don't matter. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, um, it's, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it's tempting, you know, for me to take a side or something like that. But, you know, I know they're watching me. And I know that they know that I'm saved and I love the Lord. And so when they are talking to me, they respect me, even if I rebuke them and tell them, you know, I'm sorry, you know, you're, you're wrong, you know, you're wrong. Uh, you can't talk to mom like that or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, they respect when I tell them, um, uh, that you know whatever my opinion is they do respect it and you know and they they have this little joke they say Lonnie you going to heaven because I don't even see how you could take that you know they say stuff like that but anyway so um I did spend a lot of time on the the first part um the last uh scripture uh is found in Gal Galatians 5 19 uh through 25 and I will just go ahead and uh, read that really quick. It says the acts of sin, the acts of sinful nature, and obvious sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, adultery, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, uh, dissensions, um, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the and the and like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, you know, it's just it's just the opposite of everything we said, just going through the blessed, you know. And um, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that meekness. Against such, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sin nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. And I love, love, love how it says in 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. And y'all know there is pleasure in sin. There is, um, but it's saying you've crucified that sinful nature. You know, it ain't that when we get the Holy Ghost, we can still sin, we can still cuss, we can still lie, we can still cheat, whatever. Uh, have affairs you can still do those things and and there is pleasure in sin you know but we have to crucify that sinful nature you know and uh it says with its passions and desires 
you know, there are some things, you know, that the flesh, the flesh is always, it's like a spoiled child asking for stuff that it does not need, that is going to take it to the ground. Now, I share with y'all, you know, what my flesh asked for is all them sugary drinks and stuff, you know, and, uh, and I'm having to say no, you know, but, um, you know, we have to uh, put down those uh, sinful natures, you know, the things, the jealousy, the hatred, the discord, the selfish ambitions, all those things. Uh, that's how the world is, y'all. And y'all know what, uh, you know, this is talking about uh, the good life, uh, the life that God blesses. But, you know, and 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 I put in parentheses as my own uh, little words that I said, the good life. But, you know, when we think about, you know, uh, all the things that I read, uh, blessed is, is, is he the, the poor in spirit and uh, blessed is he that mourn, blessed is the meek. Now, you know, all these things, blessed is the merciful, blessed is the pure in heart, blessed is the peacemaker, um, blessed are those who... Uh, a persecutor for my name's sake. Now y'all know good well that is not stuff. It don't come easy. It does not come easy to be me and mild and pure in heart. And when you could, you know, even Jesus on the cross, you know, he could have come down off that cross, you know. But but he he showed everything that he's asking us to do. He showed us. It can be done. It can be done. And we are without excuse, you know? And, um, you know, I was thinking about, uh, you know, like when I was looking at um, this scripture in Galatians, how, you know, they used to say, they used to call it, you know, the can't help it. You know, you just keep following the sin, keep following the sin, keep following the sin. But we can't help it if we allow God you know, to use us and we fall in love with him. Like I said, this whole, uh, both of these scriptures, it's, it's a matter of the heart. It's about where your heart is with God. If your heart is right with the Lord, if you love somebody, it's easy. Y'all know when, 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 when we were young and had them little crushes, what did we do? We talk about the person that we love. Oh, he's so cute and he's this and he's that. And you didn't do anything wrong toward that person because you love them. Even if it wasn't even the right kind of love, we still was faithful because it was, you know, the kind of love what we knew to do. But how much more? We got the power of the Holy Ghost down. We got the power of the Holy Ghost, the mighty God inside of us. How much more? You know, can we live holy and do what's right and allow? See, we have to allow God to make our hearts white. The Bible says willing and obedient. God ain't never going to take what you don't want to give. We got to be willing to give up that sinful stuff, the sinful nature. You have to be willing and obedient. Okay, well, it's 7.59. If anyone has any comments, uh, feel free. No one has a comment to take us on out. Well, going once, going twice. Well, this ends our Sunday school. I appreciate you allowing me to share the word with you all. I hope somebody got something that they could uh, take from this. I know I did. And um, Sister Vanessa, you got your, uh, Sister Sandra. No, I was just giving you, I was saying thank you. You did a wonderful job. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Well, this uh, ends our Sunday school. And... Um, Sorry. So, um, Sister Vanessa, you opened us up. Would you like to close us out in prayer? You're on. You're on mute. I keep forgetting to unmute myself. <laughs> but yes, 
Jesus. Gracious Lord, we thank you. We praise you on tonight, Lord God. Lord God, we certainly thank you for your word, Lord God, that went forth on tonight, Lord God. Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, for the vessel that you used to bring forth the word, Lord God. Lord God, showing and teaching us your word on how to be blessed, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, for we need, Lord God, to be reminded, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Uh, Lord God, uh, what is a blessing to you, Lord God, and how we are to be blessed, Lord God. Lord God, so we thank you. We praise you for everyone that was on the line tonight, Lord. Lord, those that had uh, uh, comments to say and those that did not that, that just sat back and was listening Lord God taking it all in taking nothing for granted Lord God and we thank and praise you for how you use this vessel on tonight Lord Lord God so we give you the glory and we give you the honor Lord and as we go away on tonight we will keep those things in our hearts and minds Lord God Lord God and we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus name amen Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. Y'all, this is that this is the kind of life that God blesses. If y'all want to go back over it and uh read it, read it again. But that's the that's the kind of life that God blesses. God blesses us, not like the world, you know, but he blesses <laughs> us. You know, our blessings are the blessings that we talked about tonight. So without Thank no you. further ado. All right. I love you guys. Thank hey, you. I got a quick announcement. Okay, we're having uh, the missionary ministers are having the uh, going out to evangelist. Um, Jones has set up to go to advanced healthcare this coming Saturday. We'd love to have all you all come out and join us. It starts at 11 o'clock. Um, the address is going to be in the newsletter. Uh, so we'd love to have you come. Some of our saints are out there, I believe, also. So it's a good chance to fellowship with them, Sister KK, I think Sister Eartha Hayes. So come on out and join us Saturday at 11 o'clock at Advanced Healthcare. God bless. Amen. I have an announcement too. Um, also, don't forget on Sundays, first Sunday, uh, we will be having greater kids. Uh, it's 3 to 11, I believe. And so uh, if you didn't sign them up online, you can always sign them in at the door. But feel free to bring your kids on this Sunday uh, during Sunday morning service from, I guess, time to start to the end. Okay. And also, um, I have a prayer request that um, you guys, if y'all could keep him on the altar, um, two of them. Um, this one, um, Brother Michael Hill, Evangelist Morrison, uh, asked that you would keep him in prayer. Uh, his name is Michael Hill. And also, uh, um, Chris um, Benson. Chris Benson is um, um, Dwayne Logan, Dwayne and Sharon Logan's nephew, and he is really in a bad shape in uh, Vanderbilt Hospital, and he's just mm -hmm. a young guy, too. Um, Chris is really young. Um, Christopher ben Benson, please keep him in prayer, and Michael Hill, and then... Um, Someone is saying, pray for Tiffany. Yeah, if y'all would, uh, if y'all would remember them in prayer, I, I'd be grateful. So um, if there are not any other announcements, um, we'll end this session. <laughs>